pantyhose. It is just after the disaster, the next day in the morning. I'll tell you what happened. Um, it's uh, going to be a scorcher today. High humidity, 89.2 Fahrenheit outside, and it's 79.1 Fahrenheit inside. All right, guys, so it's uh, Rob from the Off-Grid Tiny House. Tiny house looks like a disaster zone. Composting toilets in front of the fireplace. What's going on? Well, I was here. I was lucky that I came over to the tiny house during a storm because um, if you guys saw me the morning of, early morning thunderstorms that happened all night, you guys knew I was fighting this up here from filling up too quick. Well, Later on that night, things went to hell. We had so much rain in a small period of time that this container went from half to full in under a minute. It was insane, insane, insane. Now, turn the light on. Um, I have... All the fans running one back there this one the battery died on um, what I had to do this container was completely full this complaint container container was completely full and rain was still coming in so while the system was being used by the you know being flooded I had to quickly pull this fitting off, remove the washer, so the first flush system would bypass all the incoming water. So I did that and it was a hell of a mess. Water everywhere. But there you go. Um, and it's still bypassed right now because I got to get this overflow in and I got to get it in today. Because if I wasn't here, guys, oh man, I, we would have so much water in the tiny house, it'd be destroyed probably. Now, I just noticed this last night, uh, actually, when working on the tiny house, we're just above the 40 gallon mark on these lines. Um, wait a minute. Never mind. Um, the gallons are on the left hand side so right here gallons liters so the true reading is almost 125 gallons of rain and just over 40 liters um, there you go now the filters are still draining water from overnight which is insane because with this bypass to the outside all the rainwater just goes outside down this pipe now not good but that's the way it is so today after a hell of a mess last night I actually had to call my dad uh, well he actually called during the nightmare and I'm like, well, can you bring about 50 towels over to help out with that? So I even used those mats that I dried out that were soaked the first time. And was using those to get stuff. This uh, cooler is completely full of water. I need to uh, put it up here. But that's not happening until I get um, the over overflow in. Now... Um, I may be putting two overflows in. This little one, and then a bigger one. Uh, the bigger one's over here. Right here, bigger hose. And i attaching a T into there, so it will um, go right into the system. I think I'll run two, because the one's already kind of set up. And I couldn't do it last night. Even, actually, even with that overflow, guys, it wouldn't have done much. I got his tay. 
So what I had to do, because the shower, the top of the shower stall is a little too, um, too tall. Well, it's, see, I'd have the overflow way up here. I kind of want it to stop before it gets that high. So I'm putting it in lower. So that means I wrap the tube around the shower and it goes in and down. I just hooked it down in there. Um, now when this thing gets full of water, that'll be tricky because, you know, I would assume all would just flow. Um, I don't have a T for this size because this size is pretty damn small stuff. Um, but I think I'm going to put that in plus the bigger one because I got to have a decent amount of water getting out the overflow. And then I'm going to worry about getting a bucket in here later, guys, to catch that overflow water. That's uh, after the fact. I want to get this shit, this crap grilled in today and all that fun stuff. I'll show you what's going on here. We still got water filtering. Now, what I did, I discovered last night during the mess as well. This tube, remember I had a long tube that I jammed down in there so you wouldn't hear the dripping noises? I had to quickly get rid of that idea because when I pulled this tube out I found that it was full of nasty um, kind of like that see how it turned white um, this tube that I pulled out I actually threw it outside because what happened was um, it was completely plugged with that white crap and there was red red mold or red algae growing in it and I was like well no wonder the damn flow out of this container wasn't going on uh, this thing filled right to the brim guys so it was redonkulous so as soon as I cut that blockage in the tube and I have it I have this thing shortened up so it does drip into the IBC tote you hear a little bit but not much actually so that's that but uh, yeah the overflow situation, uh, I'm going to battle it two ways. So I'm going to put this guy in, and I'm going to put the bigger line in. And then, you guys know how I put that little washer in with a, lot of, a little pinhole um, water dispenser at the bottom to get rid of the first flush water. I'm going to put the bigger one in, the red one that I originally had in. And that way, I won't get as much water going into the tank. Now you're gonna say, well, don't you want all the water? And I said, well, yeah, but I don't want that much water at a time because that storm was insane, guys. Like I literally, the pressure, the water pressure was so crazy that it sprung a leak back here. And so that's why you see all those rags and I left that on overnight. I had the fans running on overnight. I had the window windows open I had this guy in the storage room open so we got some airflow and now I have solar power to work today thank God because I didn't have squat before so uh, yeah today's gonna be get the ladder over here get drilling day and I got the silicone so I'm basically gonna just drill a tight hole shove the thing in with a bunch of silicone and hopefully let that cure up before uh, we're supposed to get another major storm tonight, so I got to get off the camera and start getting at it.